Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Aaron Chalner here for From a Football DRFC, your Dogs Drovers fan channel, and welcome to this match preview. Now, it's a very late upload. I do apologise, uh, but I was working till nine, so I can't really help it. Uh, but uh, this is previewing the upcoming game at the Valley against Charlton Athletic. Uh, obviously, they sacked Nigel Atkins. They got Johnny Jackson as caretaker manager, and of course, they beat Sunderland in that first game in, under the care take a charge so uh, first of all be interesting to see who they pick as our next manager and secondly Johnny Jack Jackson auditioning for the role maybe uh, but before we get started guys please like the video if you loved it comment down below your thoughts and opinions subscribe if you're new around here click the notification bell so you never shoot your video and let's get straight into this one so obviously Charlton have played 14 matches scoring 16 conceding 23 assisting 12 uh, their defensive stats are as follows. Three clean sheets all season. We've got two. So, uh, you know, not too far off of us. Uh, so, I think with this game, probably guarantee goals. Uh, goals conceded per game, a ratio of 1.3. Uh, no errors leading to shots or goals, though. So, it's not exactly been uh, their own fault, really, uh, from what the stats say. No committed penalties. No penalty goals conceded either. One clearance off the line and one last man tackle. So, you you know, statistically, officially, there's not been any errors leading to shots or goals this season, which I guess could be wrong, but it's what Sophie Scott says anyway. Um, an average ball possession of 48.6%. Um, 1.6 ratio of big chances per game. 1.1 big chances missed per game ratio. Very interesting there. Uh, goals inside the box, 15 out of 117 chances. Uh, goals outside the box, 0 out of 48. So they're not afraid to have a crack. Um, now, obviously... Um, they've also got one penalty goal as well. Uh, their goal conversion is 13%. Um, and it's very interesting indeed. Um, obviously, you've got their manager, their current coach, Johnny Jackson. Uh, currently in the table, uh, they are sitting 20 seconds. So we beat them. We go ahead of them. Um, no matter what. Obviously, we'll have to rely on Fleetwood and Shrewsbury to drop points uh, to have any kind of chance of getting out the relegation zone. I think... What would be nice, and I think what would be nice on Shrewsbury and Fleetwood as well, if Fleetwood lose and we beat Charlton and we have to rely on Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury, uh, they've, they've scored three more goals and con conceded three less goals than us. So we can, if we do a nice three-goal swing, I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm just saying if we do that, like a nice three or four-goal swing or even one or two-goal swing and Shrewsbury get beat by a couple of goals, We'll go ahead of them on goal difference. So we've got a chance of getting out the relegation zone. We have to rely on other people as well. Uh, and looking at the matches going into um, this weekend, uh, looking at who Shrewsbury are playing, uh, they're playing Lincoln. So maybe a chance, who knows? But we have to do it ourselves, first of all. We have to uh, have a chance of beating Charlton. Now, like I said, we, we are still... You know, in back when you look at the season we've started with in the, in those first fourteen games, yes, the you know we've got back to back points now, which is great build up going, momentum going into uh, this game. Overall, in the fourteen games, we still had a very bad start. Let's not put it blunt. Let's put it bluntly here. We had a bad start, very bad start. Uh, we're not foot of the tail anymore, which is fantastic. Uh, but let's go into my predicted eleven for this game against Charlton. So. Uh, Dahlberg in goal. I've gone with Horton at left back. I think Alou had a very poor game against Cambridge. So uh, I would say drop him and give Brandon Horton a chance since Rowe is still out. There's a chance Rowe could be involved. If so, I'd probably start Rowe. But I think if, if Rowe's not starting, I'd go with Horton. Uh, Anderson, Williams and Noyle. Back four, pretty much the same, uh, apart from uh, Rowe, of course, if he's not fit. Uh, Smith, Bostock, and Galbraith in there. I've put Galbraith as the advanced midfielder, obviously with Close being out uh, for about, I think it's like two, three weeks, something like that. Uh, Hiruler on the left, Vilker on the right, and Dadu up front. A, a typical uh, front three. Obviously, John Taylor not available for this one. Uh, so, what is my predicted scoreline for the final part of the video? This one's a tough one, because on the one hand, Charlton could demolish us, but on the other hand, we could demolish them <laughs> with how many goals they've been letting in and how many goals we've been letting in uh, in the past 14 games. But 
I'm going to be safe. I, I don't think it'll be a clean sheet. We've had two clean sheets all season. They've had three. It's not going to be a clean sheet at all. I'm going... I don't know why I'm going to go with this, but... I'm going to go 3-1 to us. I think 3-1 Rovers. Now, you might think I'm mad for saying this, but... You know, with the new manager bounce and everything with Johnny Jackson at Charlton. You know, I won't be surprised if we get beat, to be honest, because of the new manager bounce and if we don't turn up on the day in the right mindset. Um, but I think that overall, I think we might have the upper edge on Charlton. I think we'll, we'll be up for it a lot more because of the position we're in and the chance we could get out of the relegation zone. But, again, so could Charlton. Uh, but I'm going to go 3-1 Rovers. Don't know why. Must be must be uh, on some kind of meds or something. But uh, I'm going to go with it anyway. It might be a bold prediction, but... We like bold predictions here. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Also, before I go quickly, I want to say a massive, massive thank you for all the love and support. Uh, because if you haven't seen it, I have completed my FA Playmaker. Now, of course, this is the st official certificate, uh, which uh, says you completed the course, the online course, the instruction course. Teach you about football, the different uh, things behind it, and the different uh, community aspects behind it as well. So uh, it's an official one by the FA from the England FA. So uh, you know, and it's, it leads you into roots, for example. So obviously, you could go and do coaching badges. You could go and do volunteering. You could go and do Wildcats, which is like a youth football. Uh, you could go and do uh, like more advanced playmaker stuff, becoming a, like. Uh, become an FA playmaker and do all the stuff with that. So there's many different routes after doing that. But, uh, you know, wonderful course. Didn't take long at all. And it was fantastic. So uh, big shout out to the England FA for the certificate. And a big shout out to every single one of you for the love and support. But that's going to be it, guys. My name is Aaron Chandler from Ferro Football, DRC, Keel and the Rovers Live. And that, my friends, full time. Rovers Live Die. Thank you very much. Might have been a bold prediction, but I'm confident. Come on, you red and white army. Rovers,